everyone, it's Dawn here. Welcome back to Bridal Business. I am so thrilled to have you back in your ears again this week. I am joined today by another special guest. You may already know her because she is in our circles for the last few years and she's also been a guest on the podcast with me plenty of times before and I love speaking with the amazing Martha Mock. Martha is a super confidence coach and motivational speaker as well as being a multi-award winning international makeup artist, author and entrepreneur of multiple businesses. You know what? Martha has had so much happen in the last 12 months. I'm going to let her tell her story. So Martha, welcome back to the show. It's wonderful to be here, Dawn. I love actually our industry is absolutely amazing. I'm so glad all the traumas that we have for the last year are slowly dying away and we're going back to normal. It has been such a challenging uh, year for all of us, isn't it? It really has been, yeah. And and I think we have been exceptionally lucky in Australia mm-hmm. to have had times where we have been able to get back to business. Mm-hmm. I know particularly where I am now in Queensland, um, it, the pandemic didn't affect them too much. There's been times where we've been completely shut down. But for the majority of the time, I will say that, um, you know, we've been able to see our clients, which we've been very thankful for. But obviously, you know, it's varied around Australia as well as it's varied around the world. So I'm exactly the same as you. I'm really excited that uh, the world is beginning to open up, that the vaccine seems to be doing its job and places like the UK and the US um, and Canada are starting to slowly open their doors again and be able to see brides. So that's yeah, I'm super excited about that. So I know that a lot has happened with you over the last 12 months because we talk like most days. Mm-hmm. But if uh, for those of you that don't know, Martha has been in the hair and makeup industry now for how many years, Martha? 17 years. Already. Yeah, I was gonna say I thought it was I thought it was gone. Uh, I thought it was coming up for sort of 20 odd years. So you've been in the, yeah. in the hair and beauty industry for 17 years. She's been servicing bridal clients. She's international. So she does hair and beauty um, here in Australia and overseas. Um, obviously not right now, but, <laughs> but has done in the past. And uh, Martha kind of, Martha has kind of a specialized uh, bridal client. They tend to be, I would say they're quite more high end. Would you say Martha? Mm-hmm. Um, the Asian not- community and also it- more of the high ticket uh, sales that I go for. Yeah, because I all been we all been into that situation. We think that one of the biggest mistake that I keep keep sharing with people is when I was at my peak, I did not increase my price for mm. four years thinking that I was not good enough, thinking that there's other people out there. And at that time, I have, I have a very valid reason because I was the only income source of my family. Yeah. So if I don't have enough work, I'm so scared to the point that I won't be able to pay my bills or put food on my table. Yeah. So if based on that thinking that I was working so much, that my health was greatly affected. I was do. I was. I remember that I. I one weekend. Okay, yeah, I did make about close to eight thousand dollars that weekend because I was working Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all the time, and it was like a sixteen-hour day per day because I follow people for the full day. And I remember I was sitting in the car. I said, like, "Okay, we got ten minutes before we need to go to this job." We fall asleep 10 minutes only. So I had to set an alarm up and then jump back and go again. Wow. And that was the moment that I realized that, hey, you know what? I need to value my self-worth. I need to value my work off and have more confidence in charging more so I can do less job and still earn that my amount of money. Hmm. And the transition was never easy. It did take me about nine months to be able to get the same amount of client coming back but what you can do is you can diversify during your break time which i did i went and go and teach my classes so i explore into teaching all over in australia i went to brisbane first melbourne adelaide perth uh, I think those are one of the places that I went to. And then I went overseas as well, Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong, all doing my classes. So during the low time, I actually find other source of income or other ways to use my skill and my business to expand into my uh, 
uh, bridal world. So I can survive during the time that when the market try to accept me in the new pricing, because mm. it's true. Once you go into a certain bracket, you will begin to have the people that is in the same lock. So that will help you to get the right amount of clients in. It is a transition period. And during that time, when you're a bit more quiet, do more promotion, uh, okay. do more photo shoot to actually upskill yourself. Invest on yourself on training. Um, one of the a thing about makeup artists is which me and Don talk a lot about it, is they are very good artists, but they're not an entrepreneur. They don't realize when they're running their business, they are actually needs to have that entrepreneur mindset. Mm. If they don't have that, they're doing a very expensive job only. It's not going to be a long term. It's not going to bring them that financial freedom they mm. want. It's not going to get them where they are. So having that investment into your knowledge of how to become an entrepreneur, how to become digitally um, advanced, like social media, that's what Don teach. Is that, uh, Don have helped me so much with my digital side. And like all of those is something that an, uh, an average makeup artist didn't think of. No. They think that, oh, I need to do another makeup course. I need to do another makeup course to improve my skill. No, you don't need to be the best in the industry. You just need to know how to sell your at, uh, best at yes. what you are good at. Sell it. Because I read this book. Uh, it's a Japanese book. Uh, and they talk about a monk uh, talking about how to use what you excel at to get the result you want. Think about it this way. What I have in me is confidence. So I am very confident in everything that I do, but it doesn't mean that I'm the best makeup artist in the world. It just means that I know I'm confident enough to give the work out and be proud of myself and proud of my work. Yeah, confidence so in your confidence. service and then in the product that you're delivering. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So as long as I have that confidence in me, I can use it to sell myself, to promote myself based on that. And because I'm already confident and congruent in the Excel area that I am in, the result, the return on investment is actually tenfold. Mm. But for example, if you're doing something that you're not good at and trying to invest a lot on it, your return on investment is only about 30 to 40%. So think about it that way. What you're really good at, then you excel in it because all the other thing will come when you try to become a better person. Like, like me, uh, I know that I'm very confident in my work, but I don't know anything about computer or digital stuff. But because you want to excel in that confident part, you can actually get other people to come in and help you. And your mind will be ready to accept that into you. Yeah. Because as makeup artists, we can be the most stubborn person on the world that we think that uh, all we need to know is the artist, our hand, like, like all that crafty thing, all that creativity. No, that's only half the thing. Yeah. Um, the other half is about marketing. It's about how to set up your business, how to have the right mindset of being an entrepreneur. And these days, due to COVID, we all go digital. And without that digital help, you are stuck. No mm. one knows who you are. It's like, I'm trying to sell a t-shirt, but uh, no one is looking at me. So uh, what am I going to do? And that's the things that we need to invest on, which a lot of artists is actually lacking on. Mm, yeah, I totally agree. And so let's, uh, well, so let's talk then for anyone that doesn't know, uh, last year, Martha actually got her coaching certificate. So just tell us a little bit about what 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 made you decide to kind of go for the for the coaching side of things and you know what you've kind of learned on the way and how that's kind of helping you now uh, when it comes to delivering your I, I guess delivering your programs and and having that confidence in yourself like what how did it how did it come about to begin with uh first thing is has to fence COVID completely shut COVID. us down yeah. so i have multiple business like wedding planning wedding dresses yeah. uh all of that it has to be shut down mm. and during the shutdown time thanks to my current partner that he encouraged me to take up coaching mm. i've been a makeup trainer for over 10 years yeah so i have. know how to actually talk and present and things like that but i didn't know that 
I can use that on teaching people, not just feeling good about their outside, but feeling good from the inside as well. So yeah. I use that experience and use what I learned and combine it with the makeup knowledge that I have to make women feel confident about themselves. Because I was one of the people that who was too scared to share my story, too scared to let people know what happened behind my back. Yeah. And learning to understand my vulnerability it allowed me to build up a rapport from the people that i was never able to actually connect with so it was a great transition from that and when you ask me about what have i learned like uh, i have done uh, nlp mastery so it, and like all the life coaching things that i do and from doing that it helped me to have a different set of mindset when i'm doing makeup for example how many of you get asked to do a makeup that is completely outside your uh, comfort zone and completely outside your style? Yeah. A few of us, isn't it? Yeah. And when we get that, either we have two feelings, either we shit our pants <laughs> or we say, I really hate that makeup, but I will still do it because she's my client. Yes. So either when you're doing it, you either your blood boil of that, I really hate this makeup. Yeah, or the anxiety you know, am I, I'm shooting my pants. Do I actually, am I really doing the right thing? But believe me that you have all the skill that you already have inside of you. And yeah. by learning what I'm learning right now to build up my confidence, I starting to understand Ooh. that I need to respect the other people's model of the world. What yeah. does that mean? is that if the client wants to look like a certain way, allow them to be because that's their belief. And their belief is only real to them. Your belief is only real to me, uh, to yourself. Mm. So think about this way. What you think is pretty is not pretty on the other people's eyes. So all we have to do is to allow ourselves to accept their model of the world, then you will be a lot more calmer. You won't be shitting yeah. your pants. You won't be so angry with boiling butt and thinking that I can't leave my cart behind because that makeup is like something that I don't do and it looks so ugly and things like that. All that negative thinking in your head when you're doing things. Instead, you're like, okay, this is what you want. I'm in customer service. I want to give you the best. And what is the best is whatever she want. Yeah. It's not what you give them. Mm. If she want that Barbie pink lipstick, give it to them because yeah. that's what they want yeah. you can give your professional advice one sentence and allow them to choose what they want yeah i it's love a, that uh, it's a I, way that we always like to have options we yeah. always like to yeah. be respected but when we are doing our clients makeup do we really respect our client or do we put our projective onto them to think about what looks nice so interesting that you're saying this because when I, I did the um I did another interview the other day with Gretchen um mm -hmm. who's in the updo group so she's a 30 year plus hairdresser she's mm -hmm. had salons you know she's been a platform artist and and she's a clarity coach and she said something so similar to what you're saying which was the way we feel about you know doing the updos and you know the fact that somebody will you know the bride will sit in our chair and then we're looking at this image and we're thinking to ourselves oh my God, you know, I don't know that I can, I can do this. You know, we, what you were saying before about, you know, you look at makeup and go, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. So you either like really get like anxious about it. She said, or you can actually sit down and you can talk it through with the client. There is nothing that says that you can't discuss a look with your bride. And like you were saying, you just give them the option. You know, you let them tell you, why do you like this Barbie pink? lipstick what is it about this color that you know is about you and your wedding because like you were like you were saying you don't know what's going on in the mind of the bride um and it's your job like you said customer service it's your job to execute the look that she really wants now of course i think most of the time you're going to find that it, I would say nine out of 10 brides, you'll do the looks that you're comfortable with, you know, that that you have, because that's the kind of bride you attract. And the more you attract this, you know, this bride that is kind of like your dream client, the more you're always going to be at ease with the looks that you do. But I think you're totally right. Giving that bride an option and saying, you know, okay, would this or this, you know, even trying it on them, would you like to try this? You know, would, can we, you know, let's try it this way. And if you look, half and half you know and the whole point of having our trials is to do just that 
as well. And I, I like what you're saying. It's just about having the confidence in yourself. You know, number one, maybe to stand up for yourself and as a makeup artist and say, let's just try this out and, and not being afraid to give your bride an option, but then also having the confidence to say, I did absolutely everything she wanted. She's walking away feeling absolutely brilliant. It perhaps wasn't what I would choose, but it's not up to me. Exactly, exactly. It's that feeling that makes me realize that how much brain cells and how many wrinkles I can reduce on my face if I actually I have worrying. that mindset and stop yes. worrying about it. Yes. Because I know that from hearing in the industry for so long, training so many people, I hear artists always get worry about oh i just did that thing i don't know if she would like it or not they have that constant worry of thinking that they're not worthy they're not good enough they don't have the confidence on building what they do instead of actually taking the little win and an achievement that they are allowed to have and say hey i completed this job the money is in my bank i'm happy i'm walking out the clients feels good I feel great. Instead of having that mindset, they constantly feel like that they need something more. And there's nothing worse on chasing an empty objective. Mm. When you're chasing something that you don't even know what you're chasing, what does that make you feel? Loss, yeah. confused, anxiety, depression, mm. everything will come in after. But mm. understanding that you have done your best in the circumstances and in the current situation, and feel good about letting it go and moving on and keep being better and, and learn from our mistake is always the best. Like a lot of people ask me, how do I come up with all these new techniques when I'm doing makeup? I say, because I make shit loads of mistakes. So I know how to uh, make it up in another way and be creative about it. And that's how creativity comes. And we are all artists. And as an artist, we have that built in inside of us, yeah. even though most people who say that, oh, I'm not very good at creating, but you're a makeup artist, right? Then believe in yourself that mm. you have that creativity. Mm. And I, that just reminded me when you said that about making mistakes, I remember you saying about the book that you're going to write, that to, don't yeah. do what Martha did. <laughs> Exactly. I need to write that book. Yeah, I've been about that. Yeah, we've been talking about that. Yeah, we've been talking about that book. Yeah, it's been about. I reckon we've been talking about that for the last three yeah. or four years, and you've been yeah. saying I must write a book on "Don't Do What Martha Did" because you said I make. Uh, but I love the fact that you own up to that. And again, this is about being confident in yes. yourself, your skills, um, your ability to work with clients, and your ability to overcome the obstacles that may get in your way. And guys, this is a reason why I love talking with Martha and, and I really want you to understand what, the, what Martha's going to be talking about on our four day live event coming up next week, becomeabridemagnet.com. There is still enough time for you guys to register for that live event. Now, Martha, some, Martha exudes confidence. Now, she'll tell you she didn't always feel like that. You know, she mm. didn't always feel. And she was just telling us before um, about how she didn't even feel like she had the confidence to put her prices up because her worry was, you know, I'm not going to get clients. But the one thing that, you know, I want I want you to get take away even from speaking with Martha is that Martha's business grew um, it's grown over the last few years or let's say over the last 15 you know, years that she's been doing this, 15 plus years, it's grown and grown. And now she's built a team around her. And, and Martha, even now, when you're obviously doing a lot more of the kind of coaching side and the more educational side of things, and you step back a little bit from weddings, even though I know you're still doing weddings, but you have a team as well. So talk to me about having the team and you know, being able to be confident to give your bookings to your team and, and sort of how you go about that. Because I think that's quite, that's another interesting thing for uh, a lot of makeup artists and hairstylists. They want to build, they want to grow, but they know that, you know, you're only one person. So there's only so much that you can do in a weekend. And then you physically don't have the capacity to take on more clients, but that is when you would have a team. So talk to me about your team and, and how you sort of went about recruiting, I guess, for that team. Yeah. 
Uh, one of the big mistakes that I see uh, makeup artists having a teamwork, because it's true, when you got a wedding of five people, you can't do it in three hours all by yourself. Mm. So it's important to have another person come in. But a lot of artists will say that, hey, I will pay people whatever that I, uh, I'm charging and take 20% commission from them. And I'm like, no, uh, you should always, and that's the difference is when you run your own business, that's an entrepreneur mindset, mm. or you are actually doing a very expensive job. And the, the other side, when you're actually paying people per head, you are actually wanting a very expensive job. What job outside that you actually get paid per head? They mm. all get paid by the hourly rate because that's how the boss get most of the money and the other people get most of the training. And what job does pay you 50 plus per an hour? Not many, isn't it? No, so you're right. I pay my uh, senior $60 per an hour or more, and, and it's only a three hour job for them, which is pretty good, pretty good money for that because I don't think there's a lot of job outside that is actually that amount of money that you can get. So think about that way. You're not taking away their, 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 uh, their earning or something. You're not disrespecting them. You're giving them an opportunity to make an extra income for their thing. And when they are in charge of that job, instead of being your assistant on that day, you can give them the full job and take a commission out. Yeah. That's what I do with my team now that when they are good enough, because you want to train a team from the start, when they finish their course or something, grab them in so you know them personally you build a rapport, you build a communication, you build a uh, connection. Skill can be trained. Attitude cannot be changed. That mm. is the one thing I always look at when I'm hiring or, or collaborating with other artists. Mm. Some people will stay with you. Like I have artists that have been working with me and still like, you know, communicate with me for what, over 15 years. We're still friends together. So it's, and, and I had, and I heard a lot of artists say, oh, it's so scary having a team, having a team is so much trouble. I said, depending on how you want it, because if you want it like a business, you won't have any trouble. It's just like any other company outside that who hires staff to work instead of you making it as a very extrinsic job of yourself and a backyard business that is the main difference when you have an entrepreneur mindset knowing exactly what you need to do when you run a business i mentor a few makeup artists uh, in our group as well mm. to teach them how not to think like an artist but a business-minded lady that they can take their business to so much broader so much more than what they ever could imagine yeah yeah no i completely agree and i like what you said there about um paying someone by the hour mm. as opposed to per head because you're absolutely right that is exactly how you know anyone will be paid in the outside world and you know maybe in the three hours they can do five people if you are paying them sixty dollars a head that's three hundred dollars that you have just paid them but if you're mm. paying them sixty dollars an hour which is extremely reasonable to be paid um, that's only $180 out of your pocket. And, and that's not to do a disservice to that person at mm -hmm. all. But when you actually think about it from that business point of view, you are running a business. You are yes, running you a business. A yes, not a charity. And I know you say that all the time. You're running a business, not a charity. I've, I've heard you say that over and yeah. over again. You're running a business, not a charity. So, and that's another thing that people would say to me, you know, how much should I pay? Um, how much should I pay my artists? Mm. And, you know, you can have, it's really up to you. I, I don't think that there is another profession where um, we pay very well. I, I think particularly mm. in the wedding beauty mm. side of things, I think that most stylists will pay pretty well. I know that there are uh, agencies that may only pay, so, you know, a 50% mm. commission, but a couple of things I think that you need to look out for when you're working with other people, that would be one, you know, that they are, that they perhaps have got a, a good reputation. Mm -hmm. um, and then number two, I would say that if you're ever going to work for an agency, unless they're going to guarantee you work every single weekend, you know, mm -hmm. every weekend, then you don't want to go with anyone that is exclusive, that making you exclusive to that person that you can't then 
um, run your own business alongside it. Because I think that I've seen a lot of uh, hair and makeup artists fall into that trap of joining an agency and the agency are saying, but you can't run your own business. Like you work for us exclusively, but then they don't give them, they don't give them enough work. So I know that's something you do with your staff. You make sure like, I'll give you work exactly. but you can yeah. work for yourself as well exactly because what my thinking is i believe in healthy competition and who knows they may have a job that needs artists and i'm free that day you know what i come out and help you just pay me by the hour like what you yeah. do yeah. because everything that you give out you get returned back it's not about not having respect for what they're learning and stuff like that a lot of people say oh like you know would i be like not disrespecting them by paying them by the hour i say okay so what jobs does a pay outside that you only need to stand and use your hand to work not lifting not anything no. and just using your skill like any other job outside pay you 60 dollars or whatever money you per an hour mm. so if you can find me another job like that then i will probably pay you per head but if Even not 40 no. 50 dollars an hour i mean exactly that's so why are you actually like you know why do people complain about that or, or too scared to ask for that and guess what the artists that who don't want to pay by the hour they won't come to you Mm. it's fine let them go and find their own job but you are the one you are the face that people come to you so you do all the hard work advertising marketing building up your network they don't have to do it then why do you actually want to pay by per head why don't you just pay them per hour like any other business that's running outside and if they get a second job which most makeup artists do they get paid by the hour anyway except until it is their own job Mm. so what is that wrong with having a bigger income for yourself and wanting a team that works for you so yeah. like me now i focus on coaching a lot and mentoring people so i'm sitting in front of a computer i don't have to wake up at 5 a.m in the morning but i still get income yeah. because all my team are working i get 20 percent. i manage their emails and stuff like that all done all happy everyone's happy it's all about making them feel valued making them feel happy yes you lose something at some point but then you gain more at the other point building Mm. that relationship because the outside world is very cool our makeup artists tend to live in a bubble but the outside world is about being an entrepreneur mindset making the most income for your job because you want to treat your job like a business not a charity i have my own non-profit organization charity to help other women yeah that is in needs and in, in abuse so i want a charity so don't think that i'm not a charitable person but i do a charity as a charity a business as a business mm-hmm. that's how we need to want and and that's about valuing ourselves as well mm-hmm valuing our brain juice valuing our knowledge and our skill our network our time do you value yourself Mm. or do you want to let other people drag you by the nose it's completely up to you yeah yeah i mean completely absolutely i i couldn't agree more seriously and i think that the confidence comes with our business um look it's going to come with experience absolutely but it also just comes with uh, trying to do the same things over and over again. So, you know, if you are not confident at delivering your prices, go stand in the mirror and say it over and over again. Because if you can't say it to yourself, then you don't have the confidence in what you're charging. And I think personally, I think that is probably one of the biggest um, one of the biggest areas of business for hair and beauty pros where they get that imposter syndrome that 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 the, they worry about but who am i to charge what i feel like i should be charging okay so i will instead of actually uh looking at it uh like uh, who am i to charge that way okay i will change the question to ask what how much you charge will make you happy Mm. isn't that your happiness is more important than anything do you want to go into a job that you completely hate for a few dollars or do you want to go in a job smiling because you feel like you're worth Mm. so is you more important your happiness more important or someone else happiness is more important than you because everyone asks me how much should i charge i always reply back how much do you want to charge 
Mm, because it's about too. your happiness. Why you want to want a business that you're not happy? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Like, will you just go into another job and don't have to worry about marketing, don't have to worry about talking to people and email, replying 10 emails, uh, cancellation fees, refund fees and stuff like that. Why do you want to go into a job that is expensive? Like education is expensive. Mm. Makeup kit is expensive. Why do you want to go into a job that you're not happy? Yeah. I don't understand. So yeah. why not ask yourself, what makes what you happy? Makes I love that. If you, if you say $100 will make me happy, wonderful. But other people is charging 200. Who cares about what other people do? Like someone charge a thousand too. So am I going to compare myself to that? Because charging a thousand dollars won't make me happy. It make me feel like that I'm not good enough. So if that's the case, charge a hundred dollars until you feel like, you know what? Today I want to charge 150 because yeah. I feel happy that way. Then do it. Yeah. Great. Charge 150. And you will have clients saying that, oh my God, you're too expensive. That's okay. There's other options outside. Mm. It's okay. <laughs> They're not your clients. Like, oh, I'm missing that $150. It's okay. You know what? You may get a call, which it happens so many times to me, that it's like, you get a call all of a sudden, I'm willing to pay you 300 Just come to a job. Mm. It happens so many times to you. You just got to believe it. When you keep telling yourself that you're not good enough, you can't charge this money, you will never get there because you will always get what you ask for. Mm. So when you ask for more, you will get more. When you ask for less, you will never feel like that you're adequate or good enough. So the choice again is yours. What is more important to you? Your happiness or someone else's happiness? Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And I think when it comes to pricing, like you said, what do you want to charge? People ask me that all the time. I see it get mm. asked in the forums. I also get people going on about, oh, you know, this girl in, you know, in my street, she's only charging $50 for makeup. Who cares? Really? Who cares? Do you want a $50 bride? That's my question. <laughs> if you don't, then why do you care? Because it's only the $50 bride that's going to go to the yeah. makeup artist or hairstylist that's charging $50. She's not going to pay $150. So why do yeah. you care about her? Yeah. Just let them do what they want to do. Exactly. I, I always say to, to, to my clients that, you know, and, and to my students, charge charge what you want to charge, number one. Yep. Don't let anyone tell you that you should or shouldn't be charging however much. And if yep. you want to charge $50, go Sweet. ahead and do that. That is your prerogative to do that that is up to you now do I think that you're going to be able to run a business you know charging the lower side the, the lower end of the market probably not I think you're going to end up probably being quite burnt out by doing that but we all start somewhere and we all learn um, and you know eventually hopefully that $50 will one day creep to 80 and then it might creep to 100 and then it might creep you know to 200 who knows but yeah. I just think that again the confidence comes in not worrying about what anyone else does the confidence comes in knowing that I charge this price for my service because I feel 100% in my heart in my head in my pocket <laughs> that I'm truly providing the best service and I can walk away happy knowing that she got what she wanted and I got what I wanted. That's exactly the same. I always get people telling me that I'm too expensive, but when they actually done my, like half my service and they say, oh my God, you're the best decision I made for my whole wedding. Mm. I get that a lot because mm. when you put your heart and soul into things, people are willing to pay for it mm. because they see the value. When you value yourself, they value themselves. Yeah. When you don't yeah. value yourself, they don't value your service. It's simple as that. Um, think of it this way when you were, uh, was actually talking about that thing. It's like when you go for something, like will you go for like uh, like a haircut, $15 haircut, or do you? I go to someone that who's charging me $95 for a haircut. So because it's like I got two hair, but this is the one thing that I cannot not take my head outside. So I have to pay for it to make sure I get a maintenance, just like on a buy on a wedding day. Do they want to look like a $50 buy or do they want to look like a multi-million dollar bait? Mm. So it's completely a mindset thinking. If you can help your clients, that's why confident coaching is so important. Most of the women outside in the world, they don't have confidence about themselves. Mm. 
Do you feel like that when a client sit down to you, what are they telling you? My eyes is too small, my nose is too flat, my, my skin is not good enough. So when you can give them the solution to their problem, to make it work, they will pay anything for you. Like mm. why people find me to Paris to work? It's not that I'm the best makeup artist, it's, but I am the best person to them because that's their belief to make, to solve all the problem they have. Think of an entrepreneur is someone that solves people's problem. A makeup artist is there to solve people's confident issues mm. and the issue of feeling like that they're not pretty enough. So once you understand that point, uh, even whatever objection that they may have, as long as you can link it back into what looks the best for them and what solution can you solve for them, mm. everything will become better for you. And your clients will be a better, uh, more happy client and yourself will be a more happy artist. Because again, who wants to do a job that you're not happy in? Uh, I'm sure that your other job is already like that. Otherwise, you won't invest on doing makeup. So if that's the case, then make yourself make your happiness the number one priority yeah i love that and also when you want to again about making your happiness your number one priority by doing that and becoming more confident in your jobs you're gonna you're going to be able to create more opportunity for yourself and i know at the beginning you said about how if you don't love doing something then don't spend all your time on it. And I think that's, I, I, that's one of the reasons why I am, am holding this, uh, the four day live event, or I run my course. So the four day live event is, is the Bridal Business Blueprint, um, my Become a Bride Magnet program, which I normally deliver over 12 weeks, but I've condensed it into this four day magnificent live event with amazing guest speakers, just like Martha. We're gonna talk about what Martha's gonna be uh, teaching us coming up in just a sec. But we need to know the areas of our business that are going to help us grow mm -hmm. and sometimes sometimes the key areas of your business that you focus on you're focusing on the wrong things and you're focusing on the things that like you were saying they don't give you any kind of joy they're not making you any money and really they're just actually a waste of time and one of the things i teach in the program is having that step-by-step -step, um, series of events where you can attract brides using your social media. Again, coming across confident with your social media, with your presence on camera, everything like that, which is what we're going to be talking about. Then being able to get brides to request a quote from you, but already knowing how much you you uh, cost because the last thing you want really is a bride on the phone wasting your time trying to haggle your prices down trying to get you to price match someone down we don't want to fuss with any of that and one of the things that my students are finding inside of my uh, program now is that if they're using these logical steps and they've got this confidence behind them of you know I know that my bride has obviously come across me on social media they may have have a look at my website they know that I charge what I charge so when they're actually ready to get a quote and make a booking I'm confident that I can turn that browsing bride into a booked bride because I have those steps in place that turn them into my customer and just having that ability to know that's the bit that you want to work on forget some of the other things now yes you do need to know about finance and you do need to make sure that you're making a profit that's another thing that a lot of hair and makeup artists don't realize when they actually add things up they're like oh I didn't really make any money last year and again that's something that is going to come with the experience but it's also going to come because I'm going to teach that inside of the program as well but Martha, talk to us about what you're going to help us with on our class next week. I'm going to help you guys to be more creative with using what you have inside and having the confidence to do so as well. It's like me in during COVID time, because there was no work, 
I figured out a way of how to still get income in. I get, I, I still got about $20,000 in during the COVID lockdown time because I was able to convince the buyer to pay me in advance mm. and give by giving them a discount and they can actually support me during the time that I don't have any other income coming in. So like, and also like taking up another coaching, coaching courses and expanding in the areas that I have inside of me to work it out. So that's the something that I wanted to teach you guys on and show you, you all have all the tools that you need to be even more successful than who you are right now. And all you needed is actually confidence to do it. So I'm going to show you guys some step-by-step -step tech of using my super confident formula that you can achieve the success that you deserve because it's not hard. It's just called determination and you don't even need motivation. That's the truth. All you need is determination and having that consistency of believing in yourself that you are worth it and your happiness come first. Oh, I love this because it's really, it comes down to the foundations of our business, which can come down literally to what you're thinking here, which is your mm -hmm. mindset. And, and I'm, I know people uh, brand mindset down, you know, you know, all the time people talk about mindset, but it truly is being able to, like you're saying, switch on your brain to know that, you know, you are, you are the owner, you know, of your own life, of your own universe, you know, and you have to believe in what you're doing. Um, so I'm really excited and I'm really excited to go through the super confidence formula as well for success, because I know that it's bringing your clients so much success um, mm -hmm. as they're, as they're coming out from being, um, you know, perhaps a bit more sort of shy, reserved and not so confident to actually coming out and owning it um, yes. and owning their business, owning their worth, owning their true value as well. So I am so excited. Yay. Thank you so much, Martha. Again, oh, I love talking to you. Uh, we could just go on forever and ever. But I'm going to let you <laughs> I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me and we look forward to see you at the event and if you haven't signed up yet do it because yes. the value you are going to get is money can't buy exactly the i just can't believe i've just got these amazing people that are joining me for the program it's never been done before so even my previous students have never had the value that you guys are getting uh this year so go to become a bride magnet.com and sign up now for your ticket to the four day live event which starts next tuesday for those of you that are in the southern hemisphere so in australia and new zealand and then for those of you that are in the northern hemisphere it's going to be monday evening for you so we look forward to, to seeing you next week thank you so much martha thank you bye